It may be because it's reconstructive. It may be because you're a movie star. Or it just may be that you've chosen to look differently. There are many reasons why people go through great lengths to modify their appearance. It's all about plastic surgery on the next show of Noon Hour Out of the Box. Coming up. Welcome back to Noon Hour Out of the Box, episode 16. A big shout out to our producer, Jenny Duhame, who makes all this happen. And to my incredible co-host, the man, the legend, Mr. Robert D'Alessio. Thank you so much, uh, wonderful uh, co-host that you are. I'm sorry that I was still dancing to the beat. I got the jingles in me this morning. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a good beat. You know, Robert, I watched last week's show several times over, I have to tell you. And what came out of that was not only our need to use filters, but the incredible demand there's been of late for the use of plastic surgery and other procedures, aesthetic procedures. Yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, um, going back to the filters is what, what's been happening is that people have been using these filters so much and then that when they go back to being the real selves again, all of a sudden they start feeling, hey, you know what, I really want to be like that. So what happens is that they actually get into the crazy idea of getting plastic surgery done and sometimes they do it for the wrong reason. Yeah, that's true. So we had spoken last week about the fact that because we are now more on camera, that people have become more self-conscious and they started to seek out ways to alter their appearance or to enhance their appearance. And in fact, they started using lots of filters. But on the other side of the coin, there's also been an, an increase in plastic surgery and aesthetic procedures. And so statistically... Oh. In 2021, people spent more than $9.3 billion on aesthetic procedures. So $6 billion on surgical options and $3 billion on non-surgical therapies. And that is an increase of actually $8.2 billion from 2019. So there was a definite surge in procedures and in surgeries as well. Well, with the pandemic and all, people are spending a lot more time with themselves, right? And what else do they have to do better than look up in the mirror and look up at all, you know, look at all the little defects they got? Yeah, you're absolutely correct. But, you know, this has been around for a while and, and there was an incredible increase in all this in around 2018. And we saw a lot of the celebrities and actors and 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 basically people who are in the public eye starting to alter their appearance or enhance their appearance. So I went and I did a little research to see some of the more popular um, celebrities or whatnot that we see. So we have here Kylie Jenner. This is her 2011 and this is her 2020. She's uh, obviously, obviously had work done. Kylie Jenner, are we talking about the ex-athlete uh, yes. Bruce Jenner? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. And she's also the half-sister of Kim Kardashian. Oh. So that's her in 2011 and 2020 and her half-sister Chloe again before and after. So there's surgical, um, there's some other injectable procedures you can see here. There's lip augmentation, there's an eyebrow and uh, enhancement there there's a lot going on but it's not just you know for the very young also sharon osborne this is oh my god wow 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 yeah so that's quite that's a that's another huge dramatic change i have another one here this one is quite striking this is donatella versace oh my god yeah, yeah she's almost Almost unrecognizable. You know what? I'm sorry. That is a total disaster. Look at her on the left, how beautiful she looked. And on the right, I don't know. There's just a huge modification in terms of aesthetics. Uh, I think she should have stayed the way she was. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, 
Mickey Rourke. He's now actually 68 years old. So the, obviously there's aging there, but there's also another dramatic change in his appearance. And it's not only, you know, it, it facial, there's a, been a lot of body work as well that's become quite popular. This is before and after of body contouring. Um, you'll see here nine months later. So this is where they use liposuction, which is another term for um, body contouring. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's amazing, eh? Uh, the, uh, it's such a difference. Wow. <laughs> Here's another one. Obviously, she enhanced her hips and thighs and breast as well and narrowed her waist. I mean, she's a completely different person. Mm. Yeah, it looks very different, as a matter of fact. Not only the way she's dressed, but also the way she appears, yeah. And, of course, again, we're back to Kylie, and this is um, a dramatic change. Uh, she's obviously had the Brazilian butt lift, and, uh, it, you know, again, she's, like, unrecognizable. It's but, but, you see, the whole thing is, is this is so incredibly expensive. And you, you go in, you, you want to look a certain way, and what happens is that it doesn't always turn out that way. Th things happen. It's like it turns out maybe differently because maybe something wrong went wrong during this procedure. That's why the doctors, the surgeons, always have you sign a release because they're not responsible. And uh, a very quick note: uh, we got a, a friend tuning in from Japan, Mr. Ryukan, who's oh, asking. Oh, amazing! Us, yes, <laughs> he's asking us what the question is today. What are we talking about today, Esther? We are talking about the rise of plastic surgery. The there rise you go. Of plastic surgery and other procedures. So, in fact, there are trends that we're seeing in 2021. And I have a list here. So, there is a new focus on eyes. For many years, eyelid surgeries have been the third most popular procedure after liposuction and breast enhancements. But now, because of mask wearing, there is this renewed uh, interest in enhancing the appearance of uh, one's eyes. There's uh, obviously more non-surgical solutions. Um, what, and and Sonia is asking, what about men who want to do Botox and or body fillers? That you know, that's very common, Sonia. You'll find um, I myself have had fillers. I've had Botox. My last time was uh, November 2019. Um, I went to Dr. Monk. He's amazing, and. Um, there were many men sitting in the waiting room with me, so it's not uncommon. Uh, there's, of course, like I just mentioned, the expanded use of Botox. There's high-definition body sculpting. And then, then, Robert, there's repairing the damage. And aside from Brazilian butt lifts being very uh, dangerous, in fact, there's also the breast implant issue. And I know you had a guest on, and she spoke about that. Well, um, we can play the video right now, Esther, right? We Absolutely, yes. Okay. yes. Yeah. So, folks, uh, Chantal Haig was on our show not long ago. Uh, such a sweetheart. She's an amazing marathoner. You can catch this episode on Rob's Inner Circle in the playlist that we Rob's Inner Circle with Chantal Haig. So let, let's take a look at this clip uh, quickly, uh, folks. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you went through your first cancer, and right after the cancer, not long afterwards, you got some uh, breast implants. I did. It took a few years, but uh, they they uh, convinced me to kind of like go through the reconstruction phase. Back then, they would take skin and they can try to reconstruct your breast the way that they should look, right? And then as years went on, I wasn't feeling as feminine as I would like to have, you know, everybody thought I was a boy. And so I said, okay, maybe I'll invest in breast implants. It'll make me feel better. I put them in. I felt the sexiest I've ever felt in a million years, go, showing up to these marathons with these implants, tight shirts, and I'm running marathons and reaching the podium. And they're saying, who the heck's this woman? I felt beautiful. But once they were in, I would have a problem after problem after problem, and I couldn't figure out what was going on. They were collapsing. I would have to have a mesh put in. I was getting infection after infection. I had like 35 operations. You know, I had cosmetic ones. I had ones to deal with infection. And then I started to get really, really sick. I was getting rashes. I was having urinary tract infections. I was getting headaches, dizziness. I couldn't keep a lot of food in me. I was starting to be allergic to a lot of foods, which I had never been allergic to before. And I was telling the doctors, I said, something's not right. And they're like, no, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. But 
the downside, I knew something was wrong. Do you think, Chantal, that it was due to rejection that your body was rejecting the uh, rejecting the implants? Well, if at first I I was starting to do my research online and I uh, read this thing called what was called breast implant illness, and I was like, whoa, I've got all these symptoms what is going on so i presented that to uh to the plastic surgeon who had put them he goes no you're exaggerating no 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 then i got onto health canada to find out more about these implants and little did i know that the implants that were placed in me were the ones being recalled and i just sat there looking at the computer screen saying these breast implants were recalled on November 24th of a certain year, and they were placed in me December 5th of that same year. So that doctor knew that these implants were recalled and he still placed them in me. That's absolutely awful. That's, that's a tragedy. And doctors are just as busy augmenting breasts as they are removing implants. That's what's going on now. That is one of the, the top five operations that they're doing. And uh, well, like the Chantal was saying, um, well, she, I don't know, I don't remember if, if exactly she was saying that in that little segment because I, um, I was checking out some of the operations going on over here. But what happens is that these things actually start leaking. Yes. And yep. there's a poison in there, in the plastic. Yeah. And, and that becomes cancerous in your body. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, it's it's absolutely awful. And and so breast implants and the Brazilian butt lifts, they're actually quite dangerous. And so now people are opting for a more natural look and they are actually taking fat from one part of their body and using it for their uh, breast augmentations now instead of using implants. Yes, Dr. Monk. <laughs> no affiliation. I just really like the guy. He's very good. So, yes, Sonia was asking about that. Yeah. yeah. And it can be fatal. Yes, Jenny says, and absolutely horrible for the patient. It could be fatal. Yeah. It's, it's, you take a chance when you're getting plastic surgery. Procedures are different than non invasive ones. Um, but, you know, Botox and fillers, there's other things you can do like micro needling and, and, you know, procedures like that. And they're quite safe. Um, and Sonia says, this is why I'm so afraid of any type of plastic surgery. Yeah, you have to do your research. You have to do your research. Get to know about the procedure. Get to know about the physician that you um, are thinking of using. You, you know, be an advocate for your body. It's, it's so important. Esther, you know, usually at about this time, we hear, you know, that voice. You know, yes, that yes, yes. Jenny's fun facts. Exactly. So, so she... <laughs> Jenny, Jenny's been very busy, but she will be available on Noon Hour Out of the Box fan page. She will be on our social media pages as well, on our Facebook and Instagram stories. So you can see um, her clip for the week. And I can't wait. We love Jenny's fun facts. <laughs> She's very creative, you know, and it gets, it gets pretty funny sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. So I just want to bring up one last thing about this trend uh, because we're wearing masks and a new focus on the eyes. And there's this new procedure called Fox Eyes. And uh, Dr. Stephen Cohn from California is an expert in this procedure. And I just have a tiny little clip. So I'm going to play it right now. This is a really cool trend. And the reason I think it's so cool is, one, the idealized brow in a woman is really elevated from the middle to the outer third in a really nice way. This is really not a trend. This is a this is an idealized version of beauty that's been around for, you know, since the ancient Greeks and Romans. So to me, the only trend about that is it's become popular on Instagram. But this this little maneuver, that's a great that's a great procedure. That's going to stick around. Now, is it best to do that with a thread? Oh yeah, if you want to try something on for size, so the thread's going to go away and maybe you're going to have an effect for about a year. Can it be more permanent? Well, we're not permanent, so it can't really be permanent. You're going to age, so it may require being redone. Even when we do a very minimal temporal, this being the temple, temporal brow lift, Beautiful procedure can be done under local anesthesia and produce that fox eye that you want for a long-term benefit, much more so 
than just using a thread, although threads are wonderful, easy to use. But that's an interesting trend that's here to stay, in my opinion, because what it's doing is really trying to actualize an ideal version of oneself. Actualize an ideal version of oneself. Now, that's, <laughs> that's important to remember. And that's what this is all about. So don't try to recreate yourself. Just get an actualized version of yourself. Just be comfortable with who you are. You know what? It's actually going to be actualized right now, Esther. Ah, oh, my goodness. Is it that time again? It's that awful time once again. It's time to say goodbye. Thank you to everybody for tuning in. And don't forget, Jenny's Fun Facts will oh, yes. be where? It'll be on the Noon Hour Out of the Box fan page. It'll be on all our social medias, Facebook and on our Instagram stories as well. So I cannot wait. Well, uh, next week, Esther, we have a pretty amazing show. Tell us about yeah, it. Yeah, why don't you do that? Because that's an area that you have great interest in. Well, it's not Area 51. You can call it Area 52. It's actually everything to do with astral projection. And what that means hmm. is when your soul leaves your body in a controlled matter a lot of times, and you can go out and you can travel the world and go wherever you want, doesn't cost you a dime <laughs> <laughs> just letting you know sometimes i say oh my god i remember seeing that place it's like in brazil somewhere rio de janeiro you never actually went there but you were there what happened is that you've probably been there through astral projection so that's oh. going to be an amazing show next week it's something that i know about yes so, fascinating uh, and here's Chantal hey with her comment thank you so much for tuning in Chantal. Um, she was an amazing guest in Rob's Inner Circle. And a reminder, you can catch the entire show on Rob's Inner Circle. Just go on to Bobby Short Shorts, click on the playlist, Rob's Inner Circle with Chantal Haig. And uh, these are Jenny's uh, closing comments. And uh, we have another comment from uh, Christine Dandaran, who is tuned in. Thank you, Christine, and thank you to everybody for tuning in uh, to uh, – I was about to say Rob's Inner Circle – not even Esther's Breeze. What's the name of her show, Esther? It's Noon Hour Out of the Box. <laughs> so, guys, we'll be catching up with you next week. The subject will be, once again, astral projection. Wow. So, guys, <laughs> we'll be talking soon. Thank you for tuning in. Ciao, hey, Esther. Now. Yes. Bye, bye Esther. Bye-bye. <laughs>